download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. So what does it take to learn to play fast? This is the mystery to most people. Uh, and we approach it in a totally idiotic way most of the time. But it's really not that hard to understand exactly. You know, it's a science. It's not something that, you know, some people can do, other people can't, can't do it. You know, some people have the talent, some people don't. It's really a science of, you know, you do A, B, and C, and then the body responds in a certain way. But we have to look at it from a brain perspective, brain-body perspective. So, so uh, I get a question a lot because I tell people to say, okay, focus on accuracy and precision and repetition. So instead of, instead of, yeah, instead of trying to play fast, which is a disaster when it comes to trying to build speed, because we try to apply the same method that we do when we try to put a ball through a hoop in basketball, right? We try and try and try and fail and fail and fail. And then at some point, the body learns exactly what to do to get the right kind of reward. Ah, I, I made a swish, right? And that's a totally different thing than trying to uh, do alternate picking very fast. Simply because, first of all, this is su such small movements. The body and brain has to learn to do something very accurately very accurately, like tiny movements, and also very fast. You know, if you were to engrave something in a ring, like, you know, a plate of gold or something, and you really have to do it right, you do it slowly, right? Because it's small and it's accurate, right? You have to be very accurate, very, very precise on a, on a minute level of movement, right? It's just such a small entity. And of course, you slow down, even though you've been doing it for 100 years, right? That little thing, you still do it relatively slowly because you focus on accuracy and precision. When it comes to alternate picking, you have to do something that's very small, but you have to do it fast. So how would you approach that? By, a br by brute force, like trying to put a ball through a hoop and it's absolutely not going to happen, sorry. You might uh, get to a place where you can fake it, like, you know, and put a little distortion. In it. You know, and, and you got something that sounds fast, but that's not what you want. I know it isn't. So what is really going on when the body adapts to uh, doing something very accurately, very small and very fast? Well, just look at people who do the same little actions every single day, right? Uh, on a factory, for instance, you know, they have a, uh, they have to do the same thing on that shoe every single day. So a new shoe comes around, they put the shoelaces in or they do the bottom of it, whatever. But it's the same four, five actions they do all the time. And when people start out like that, they just, they're very slow because they do everything accurately. But then as you do thousands and hundreds of thousands of repetitions of the same thing, it looks like magic when people are doing it. It looks like a machine because it is a machine because they just go, how do you use me a boo? And it, it's, it's on to the next person who then does something else to the shoe, right? It's just amazing what the body would do. But the reason why that happens, because let's say you were to do the same action for 30 minutes a day, right? Uh, as on that factory, then you're, you wouldn't progress half as fast. It's because people do that stuff eight hours a day and the brain goes, wow, this takes up a lot of resources. And please remember this, the brain only thinks of one thing all the time. How do I save resources? It's only focused on survival. You know, the, the deeper parts of the brain that does the automation of alternate picking is only focused on survival. How do we survive? By preserving resources. That's why when you eat, for instance, in the body, that if you eat too many cal calories, it has a method, it has a technique of storing those calories and fat, right? That's why your liver never receives any more energy, any more resources than it needs. Just, you know, enough for it to work perfectly. And that goes for every single part of the body. If you work out, your muscles, your muscle size and strength will increase. If you stop working out, that stuff is just, you know, your muscles get smaller by the day if you start working out. Because, you know, we can use those resources for something else. So let's eat the muscle so we can use it for, to replenish the liver instead, right? That's how the brain thinks with everything. That's why we're lazy. Why should I do anything when it's not, when it's not necessary, right? 
So it will, it will always, you know, put the butt in the couch, do nothing, eat high calorie stuff. So we get a lot of resources into our blood and into our body. That's what the brain is out, up to, right? Then you got the frontal lobes that say, hey, no, that's gonna make me fat and that's not good. You know, I'll lose my whatever. And then you do something else, but you do something else in spite of what the brain wants to do all the time. That's the human predicament, right? Uh, you want to go for the quick hit, the ice cream, lots of calories, lots of energy, sugar, now, 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 right? For the brain. And then something else goes, no, 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 no. Your upper level of the brain says something else to the lower parts of the brain. Ah, don't, not the ice cream. The problem is the brain, the lower parts of the brain regulates emotions. So you feel like eating the ice cream and the higher brain does not regulate emotions. So you have to be very strong up there, right? In the frontal lobes. But when it comes to learning, that mechanism of saving resources is what you, you will use simply by taking that picking motion and saying, this is what I want, but I want to do it fast. How do you tell the brain that you want to do it fast? By doing it a gazillion times. Because then, you know, I have to use conscious resources to make that happen. Let's just say that. I don't at, the, at this part, right? But I used to. And then you do this, like, let's just say you did it eight, eight hours a day, straight up, right? Like do, going to work, this only thing here. I can, I can guarantee you, you know, 100% certainty that 99.999% of the population, if they did this eight hours a day, that the brain would figure out a way to make this really easy and really fast because let's get it over with, right? So, and let's put it, you know, let's automate this process. Instead of you having to be conscious about picking, let's put it in a, in a, in a place in the brain where it's automated. So you can just go and then you could talk to your, your colleague just right next to you. So you can use your resources for something else. That's what happens when you drive a stick shift car and that becomes an unconscious process, right? Or you do anything else, like you open a door, walk around, talk, and all those are patterns that are very fast, very efficient, and they're all automated. And that's what we want to do with picking, right? But how do you automate things? You do it a lot of times, but you don't rush it. Because then what you are doing a lot of times is an inconsistent, uh, it's an imperfect action. It's like trying to open a door really quickly every single time. Every time you see a door when you're a kid, you open it very quick quickly. What does that do to your learning process? It, it makes you very good at opening doors very quickly, you know, hurting yourself because ah, you grab the door knob too quickly, right? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. So we have to. And the only way to get to that point is to say, okay, I can't do this eight hours a day because I go to work. But how many, you, you, normal, you know, you might have eight hours where you go to work. You have eight hours where you sleep. Let's just say that. And then you got eight hours where you do all the other things, right? Can you do this with accents? You know, if you got my alternate picking program, the ultimate training system, then you know that we need the accents to group stuff in your brain. This is not the only secret, but we need those accents and those you can do all the time. It's a matter of rhythm and that's why we lose uh, synchronization. But, um, but it's a matter of repeating it enough times, and you can do that without your instrument, like that, 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 triplets, right? That, 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 over and over again for eight hours straight. You can do that. You can talk. You can cook as you do this, and keep that rhythm going inside your body. And with every chance, watching TV, watching YouTube videos, whatever you do, talk to people. You can go. Yeah, it was a great day. Yeah, we had fun. Yeah, the clicking. Yeah, that's just something you have to, you know. If you want to be with me, you have to listen to the clicking, right? The without sound. And then you can talk to people because you practice stuff at a level where you can start doing it without thinking about it. Oh, you shouldn't do that class. You should have focus on what you're doing. Otherwise you're not learning. That's the first level. Use your metronome, become perfect at doing it slowly. Once you are that you have, you have, you have no effort practicing. So the answer to that question, will I become better if I do perfect repetitions? Yes, if you do enough of them. Because if you just do it for 30 minutes a day, you will never get to that point where it's absolutely you can do it at, at that level. Because the brain simply don't find it important enough. How does the brain determine whether or not it wants to automate a certain action? The more you do it, the more important it gets. Because the more resources you're spending on it. It's so simple. Right? 
So, so you need to do be doing it all the time. Da, 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 da. Triplets, right? You'll be doing those simple exercises. And then when you're in front of the TV, you do it as well. And you keep doing it at a level where you can do it perfectly with no, no uh, straining, no stressing, no nothing. And you follow the advice of the shallow picking, the accents, the everything that we teach. Once you do that, I promise you, there's absolutely no way that your body will not adapt to that and start play doing the same thing extremely rapidly. <laughs> so, so that's the secret. And then we got all kinds of other little strategies and techniques that we can boost this with, uh, this process with, uh, and get even faster results. But that's the basis of it. That's the meat of the strategy of how to get to, and it doesn't matter what it is. It might be legato, you know, Create a perfectly loopable exercise that you're playing perfectly with the hammer-ons and pull-offs, is that if that's what it is, really do the hammer-ons and pull-offs correctly, or effectively, I should say, and then build that loop. And then give me two million repetitions. Give me one million so you know that you can actually do millions of repetitions. It takes a couple of months to do uh, a million repetitions of anything. And if your brain goes, oh, a million, you must be crazy, then okay, it's over, right? You have to get to the point where you get excited about the million repetition and actually jump aboard and try to do one thing in your life a million times, right? On this instrument, you count all the repetitions, right? And then suddenly you realize that that is really the secret. In two months, what is that, right? When you can practice, 90% of the time you practice this stuff, it's while watching TV, talking to people, while stand, waiting for the bus, you know, sitting in the car with your junior guitar doing it. That's the surefire path to getting to that point. And you'll have a, a perfect picking technique once you get to get it up to speed because you haven't been pushing and shoving and trying to do it. And you don't have any injuries in your elbow or your back or your hand. And you don't look like a fool when you do alternate picking. You're not, you know, you're not doing all kinds of weird stuff and all kinds of shortcuts because you don't need to. You actually got a picking technique that worked. And you hold your hand in exactly the same way as when you're phrasing. <laughs> it's the same thing because you don't need all that crap. <laughs> Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.